Let's learn in this lightboard session about the different options to upgrade a NakeS cluster. We'll explore three options. First of all is the cluster blue-green upgrade. Second option is the cluster in-place upgrade. And third option would be the node pool blue-green upgrade. So let's get started. Let's start with the first one, cluster blue-green. So with cluster blue-green, let's say for example, first I have an AKS a cluster with a specific version. I call it the blue. That is my existing version. And then I want to upgrade to a newer version represented by, let's say here, AKS a green. So I will create a fairly new AKS cluster, completely new cluster with that newer version. I'll deploy my application into that new cluster and then I'll go to route user traffic to that new, traf uh, new cluster. So I su I'm supposed to have here a load balancing solution like a traffic manager, for example, that will go to route the incoming traffic to from or from the previous cluster and then it will go to route it to the new cluster. So that will allow you to go from version 126, for example, to version 127. And you will, ha will have no service interruption. So this option actually is very good because we would have the option for cluster rollback. If anything bad happens to this with this new cluster, I can just roll back to the old cluster because I will not delete that old cluster until I verify that everything is working well. So that old cluster is serving me as a backup. And this approach is also useful in some cases where I need to change the AKS config. Some configuration requires recreating the cluster. For example, here we are talking about changing to Azure CNI, for example, Azure CNI overlay, or changing to a bigger subnet. So I cannot change the subnet of my cluster unless I recreate the cluster on a bigger subnet or redeploy the node pools onto that bigger subnet. And that's what one common mistake with AKS is that some customers will start with a a small uh, subnet and then once they uh, deploy multiple applications and their application starts to scale to scale out they will need a bigger subnet so one solution to do that is to recreate the cluster using this approach some other config would be also like using the udr if you want to change to using UDR to route or the egress traffic to a firewall, then we need to recreate the cluster if you want to use VNet integration and so on. However, the downside of this approach is that because here we are creating a new AKS cluster, we need to redeploy the application into this new cluster. So this means that our CD pipelines will be changed. They will need to reference this new AKS cluster. And in addition to that, another downside is the persistent volumes. Maybe with this cluster, I'm using Azure Disk, for example, and then I will need to migrate the Azure Disks from the old cluster to the new cluster. So here I need to actually restore those persistent volumes. For that, maybe I'll be using an open source solution like Velero or AKS uh, Backup in order to create a backup of my data from the old cluster and then restore it to the new cluster. Let's now move to the second approach, which is the in-place upgrade. So let's say here I want to move from 126 to 127, for example. So I would have my VMs or my node pool running multiple VMs in 126. Let's say here I have three VMs in that node pool. So with the in-place upgrade, what will happen is that we would have some steps. First step would be to, of course, before upgrading the node pools, we need to upgrade the control plane, and then we go to upgrade the node pools. So here we divide the upgrade operation into two steps. First, we upgrade the control plane that's managed by AKS, managed by Azure. There is almost no risk there. And then I'll uh, go to upgrade my node pools. And here I upgrade with the node pools one by one. And typically I will start with the system node pool. And then I'll move to the user node pool and I'll upgrade them one by one. I never upgrade all the node pools at once, okay? 
and each time I'll go to upgrade a node pool, what will happen is that the way AKS will upgrade that node pool is that it will go to take those VMs one by one. It will start with the first VM and it will go to upgrade it to the version 127. And then it will go to delete that VM. And it, once that's done and it's successful operation, it will move to the second VM, upgrade it to 127, remove it. And when it removes the VM, of course, it will also taint and uh, co cordon and drain that VM. It means that the pods will be rescheduled on the new VM. And it will finish that operation with the last VM. This way, I would have now a new or the same node pool, but with a newer Kubernetes uh, version. The advantage of this approach is that it's easy. We just click a button on the Azure portal to upgrade the control plane and then click another button to upgrade a node pool. So it's easy and also fast, but it have multiple downgrades. I mean, disadvantages. First, it's difficult to roll back because in AKS, once we updated that control plane, we cannot roll back. There is no downgrade possible. And the same for the node pools. Once we start node pool upgrade, we cannot roll back unless an issue happened and at the middle of that upgrade, then maybe that node pool will be rolled back automatically, but it will be rolled back by AKS. It's not you who have, it's not the user who have the control when to roll back that uh, node pool. Of course, here you still, uh, be able to recreate another node pool with the old version and then roll back your application, but that's it up to you to do it manually. And because then your applications will be migrated to the new version of Kubernetes automatically by that cordon and drain mechanism, so you don't have time to test your application. So this doesn't give you the opportunity to test your application against the new Kubernetes version. We know Kubernetes might introduce some breaking changes. So you need first to test your application. So if you want to use this approach, make sure you use before applying it on the production environment, uh, apply it on your dev and test environments, make sure your application is ready for the new Kubernetes version. Again here, um, AKS, is not responsible for upgrading your applications. It's uh, your application is uh, the customer responsibility. So make sure you upgrade clearly your application to support the new Kubernetes uh, version. Great. So I would say this approach would fit most of the customers. Okay. But for the customers who re really need a rollback plan and needs to test their application inside that uh, cluster to make sure it works correctly, they will be interested more in using the node pool blue green upgrades. Let's discover how this works. So in an AKS cluster, we always have a control plane. Okay. And an AKS cluster would have one or multiple node pools. Each node pool will contain one or multiple virtual machines or nodes. So this is my node pool, let's say this is the uh, blue node pool, which is running version 1.26, for example. And then I want to upgrade it to version 1.27. So always first I'll start with upgrading the control plane. And then instead of upgrading the node pool, the existing node pool itself, like we did here with the in place upgrade here, I'll go to create a new node pool. We know in AKS we can have one or multiple node pools. So we'll go to create a new node pool here. Let's call it node pool green with the new version that is 127, for example. And inside that new node pool, we would have VMs running the new Kubernetes uh, version. And uh, here in AKS it's possible to have two different versions of the node pool within the same control plane. It's just, they just need to be uh, in N minus one or N minus two. So the control plane in this case could be 127 or even 128, and it will support those two different versions of Kubernetes inside the node pool. So once we uh, create that new node pool, so let's say here, create new green node pool, the step number three 
would be to redeploy the application into the new node pool. Redeploy means that I will create another instance of my deployment and deploy it exclusively to that new node pool, redeploy the services and so on and make sure they work. Or I can just apply the same principle here where I go to cordon and drain the application from the old node pool and then they will be rescheduled into the new node pool. So for that, I will say here either redeploy or, or migrate the app to the new node pool. The app now is running in the new node pool, especially with when I do redeploy, then here I will be able to test the application and validate it. So here I still have two Kubernetes versions. My application will be migrated to the new version. I'll test it I'll make sure it works fine. If it do, then I'll go just to use it in production and then I'll go to delete the old node pool, the old uh, blue node pool. So this option, its advantages is that it's easy. We have a rollback that is possible. Rollback is possible because I still have here the old version of Kubernetes or the old version of my application. I can just roll it back and delete the new node pool. And the third advantage is the testing. I'll be able to test my application against the new version and against the new Kubernetes version. I hope this was helpful. Thank you.